Is this market something to be excited about or just a bear market bounce? Stay tuned, we'll discuss this and much more. Hello, this is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV, where education is the key to a successful financial future. First up, thank you. Thank you for getting us to over 1,000 subscribers. It's really made a big difference. We appreciate you watching. On today's video, looking for additional information, click below for more links, etc. Also, if you find this video of value and are looking for a different opinion, that of Wall Street and Big TV, please do consider subscribing. So first up, let's talk about our agenda today. Is this just a bear market bounce or something more? We're going to look at the charts and we'll see what we're looking at right now. We will give our signals to the market, short, mid, and long term. Tweets of the week. What keeps me up at night? What's on my radar? Lots of stuff. Let's get going. First up, daily chart. This will determine our short-term signals. What do we see here? Well, first up, we're back in the box. Kind of a good thing, right? We've been stuck in it for a while, broke down, still way below up here. That's your 200-day moving average. You know, what else do I see here that tells me that it's a bear market bounce versus a new run-up. Well, if you look here, as we went down in December pretty strong, look at the volume. As we went down, volume really went up. So we had a lot of conviction behind that selling. And then we go ahead and we look, right? So since December 24th, we've had this run-up. Look at volume. Peak, low, 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 low. Lower volume every single day. What you see here, I don't know if we can zoom in, that's a 50-day moving average of volume, and we're way below it as the market goes up. That tells me not a lot of conviction. Same thing here on this chart. When I take a look here, on the same daily chart, am I looking for anything? Yeah, momentum's pointing up short term, not surprising. We're stuck up here. This is relative strength. Is there strength behind it? This tells us over here we got oversold. Now it looks, it's kind of hanging there. All right, let me take away some of those marks, but we've been here before, right? Can we break through this time? Time will tell. So the other thing that I'm looking at when it comes to our short-term signal, because at this point, I'm not ready to believe in it. New highs minus new lows. Black line is your S&P going straight up. And last year, okay, 18, we hit new highs, right? And look at that. We're talking about 300 new highs minus new lows. That's a lot of strength. Now, last summer, I was telling everybody I didn't believe the run-up over here because we didn't have that. And you can see, right, not a lot of new highs minus new lows. How about yesterday? 15, that's it. That's not a lot of strength. Okay, so there's a little reaffirmation of what I'm looking at right now. The final thing I look at to make my determination, again, I'm looking for that thrust, S&P, companies above or below the 200-day moving average, below 40 is bearish, above 60, bullish. Boy, I'm talking really fast today. But S&P, just 33%, NASDAQ, 44, a little bit stronger after yesterday, smalls and mids, 26, 27%. So right now, short-term signals are neutral, okay, with a negative bias. We'll continue to watch that. Now let's go to our midterm view. This is a weekly chart, a little different. I'm going back to 1999. Why? I'll show you in a second. So, you know, for starters, we've talked about this, right? There's your negative crossover. You might be able to see it. We have a little bit of a button hook here. So, kind of a positive sign, but until it breaks above, I'm not going to get too excited there with that. Now, the other thing that we look at, has anything changed, okay, if I push this up a little bit as far as our trends? So, here's our, you know, you look at our trend, not very good drawing, but we're still below that trend. So, we've broken the trend and we have a negative crossover on momentum Neither of those are good things. And here's the last thing that I kind of came up as I was preparing this week. 
I see it. Maybe you do as well. Maybe not. But here's what I see. Here's our topping process. There we go. Topping process. Topping process. That is not a good sign. So right now, midterm signals are still negative. Next up, let's go to our long-term signal. New chart, new look here. Why is it a little bit different? I'll explain in a second. But when we went negative at the end of the year, it's because we had a negative crossover in momentum. And as you see down the bottom here, right, when have we had them? 15, 16, 07, 08, 1999. Now, when you get that kind of signal, because you don't get it very often, you have to stand up and pay attention, which is what we've done, okay? So that's number one. Number two is, you can follow. Everyone's like, when do you get in the market? When do you get out of the market? No, there is no true science, but the dotted line is your 12-month moving average. If you're above it, things are good. Be in the market. If you're below it, you want to be out of the market. I mean, look at the trend line, right? Now over here is QE, QE, Operation Twist. QE, we're still above it. This is where we start quantitative tightening. And look, we are below it. Long-term signal right now, negative. Treasuries, had a little bit movement recently. As you can see, we've gone up a little bit. This is your two, five, 10, 30 year. Yield spread has come up, kind of a good thing. We've talked about that as a precursor to a recession. But I do feel that we peaked on the top end. And I'll go over here. This shows your 10 year. It's actually TNX is how I view it on here. But it's the 10 year and you can equate it 27.36. That means the 10 years 2.7. 736. I think we've peaked here and we're going to go over a couple reasons. One, death cross. We just had a death cross in a 10 year treasury. So last year, last year, last week, I added some treasuries to our portfolios, anticipating rates to go down again. Next up, tweets of the week. First up, I have Daniel Lacale. Hopefully, I'm saying your name right, Daniel. But S&P earnings expectations. Hello, that's a big nosedive. We're seeing it already with a lot of people missing that. Goes with our theme of slow growth. Next up, one of my favorites, Danielle Martino Booth. I talk about her all the time. Her book, Fed Up, will have an image here somewhere and a link below. Investors have to remember every four months, okay? 200 billion of quantitative tightening. So we're taking liquidity out of the market. Basically equates to another rate hike. There's a link here as well in the video. Please watch that video. And our last one, Holger. I don't know how to say his last name, uh, but he was talking about last week's uh, Barron's Roundtable and Jeffrey Gunluck and notes that national debt last year surged to 1.5. 27 trillion. Holy moly, nearly 6% of the GDP. I'll give you a quick in look live view of what it looks like today. It's not pretty, right? This is an unprecedented increase for peacetime, full unemployment economy. That is a big issue. Next up, what's on my radar? We made some changes to our portfolios. Obviously, there's a lot going on right now. As I've explained to clients during reviews, we're in the middle, right? Over here is the bull market that seems to be gone, but we're not 100% surely in a bear market, so it's very difficult to find opportunity right now. But some of our sectors on our radar, I did a different view this time to kind of give you, but you'll see the theme, right? To your right over here are REITs, kind of bottomed out and start coming up. I like the way that they're moving up. Same with healthcare. Gold, I talked about this on Tuesday Top Charts. It's really done exactly what I said, which broken out and we're consolidating right now. Not in common after a big run, but we added to gold. Uh, at the beginning of the year. And then utilities. I still like utilities. Had a little hit the other day, but still like where they're going. Next up, what keeps me up at night? <gasps> so first up, what keeps me up at night? A lot of things, but beware of the cycle. He bites from our friends at Hedgeye. 
Love it. That's the truth. End of cycle signs everywhere right now. And that's one of the things that keeps me up night. Here's ISM manufacturing, biggest drop in December in a month since 2008. That's an issue. That's a good leading indicator. Here is what we're looking at is quantitative tightening. So again, the Fed coming out, taking liquidity from the market, what it actually looks like. And if it goes this way and the market goes up, what happens when they go the other way? I mean, it seems to be that we're gonna go down because the market loves liquidity, okay? So that's a big concern right now. China, national debt, 350%. That's a big issue. China's got big problems right now. We've been out of emerging markets since second quarter last year. They're in a bear market. They're slowing. I mean, you never know really what's going on because they always lie. Wrapping things up, fear and greed. 31 up from 12, so still a little bit of fear in the market, not surprising. Our indicators, once again, short term is neutral with a negative bias. Mid and long term are both negative. Thanks for watching. Michael Loftus, Wealth and Wisdom TV.